Okay, so I'm at the Javits Center, AES. There's <laughs> a very long line that I was waited in, to, only to be told that it was the wrong line, and I had to go to the end of the other line. So a few more signposts might be appreciated next time, but that's fine, I got my pass, and I'm gonna go in. There's two shows here, there's the NAB show up there, but we're gonna go into the AES, the Audio Engineering Society. So here we go, we're going in here. Let's see what we can find. These are the Allied Precision Monitors, handcrafted and digitally controlled studio monitors. They are based and handcrafted in Italy, believe it or not, so good stuff there. But what we've got, we've got three different flavors of our monitor. We've got a five inch, a six inch, and an MTM. With each of these monitors, you have some great functionality and features. You've actually got an advanced acoustic design, unless you have the low resonance MDF wood. You've got a class D power amplifier designed by IK built in back. And you've got built-in room correction in each of the monitors. Each one has its own set of You can put the microphone in, hit the valve brake button, and it solves and saves that in the room for you inside the monitor itself. You also have an ultra-flat response. So this is going to be the flattest monitor probably you've heard in quite a long time. And they're calibrated for plus or five minus dB. Minus five dB for each monitor, which is pretty amazing. You also have the uh, time alignment and linear phase response on every monitor as well. And of course, they come with the X monitor software, which allows you to change the voices of each monitor, giving you more flexibility and more control. So it's not just one monitor, it's multiple pairs of the monitors all in one place. And if you get a chance, you can grab the actual additional uh, remote control, which changes the voices for you inside the monitor itself. And you do have four different voices that land in each one, so you start off with great voices to get you going. This is going to be 135 watts, 150 watts, and 175 watts in the monitor. So great stuff for you with the allowed precisions. How does it work if I if I purchase one of these? How do I calibrate it for the room? Is that easy to do? Super easy. You actually plug in the included microphone in the box into the back of the monitor. It has a button that says calibrate. You hold that button down. It sends out a test signal for you and takes all that information and puts it into the speaker for you. Super easy. It takes about 15 minutes max. X monitor software looks just like that, and it pulls up where you can add those different voicings right inside this the small section there. And you can save other calibrations inside there and save inside of X monitor as well. But it comes with over 20 different voices you can add in to add to the monitors all right. So this is Melodyne, and this is... Hi Sam, how are you doing? I'm Aaron. I use this on my lockdown recordings. So I wanted to say hi and ask you um, what's going on. Is there any new versions? Also, I got the M1 Mac. I think there's a, there's a thing happening with that, right? So with Pro Tools, um, you've got the ARA version, which is fully integrated with the Avid system. So it actually gives you the lane to tune within Pro Tools, and you don't actually have to transfer the audio into it anymore, which is really, really helpful. Uh, really speeds up the workflow just in general. I'm not working in Pro Tools that much these days, um, but so I'm using the regular, I, I guess, version that everyone's used to. Um, but some of the things that I'm really happy about, excited about with the new Melodyne Studio 5 is that they're just the amplitude tools across the board uh, have really been updated. So you can really get a balanced performance before you hit a compressor, before you hit any real type of processing. You can really smooth everything out across the board, as well as obvious, like the obvious things like the tuning functions and all that. However, there's one tool in here in particular that I'm really jazzed about. It's the Sibilant tool. And it allows you to actually highlight areas uh, and then turn up the S's or turn down the S's, which we all know if you have ever had, wet, say if, when you have harsh S's, sometimes you got a daisy chain or stack de-S'ers after de-S'ers after de-S'ers and still doesn't do the trick. So to really ad attack it at the source and turn it down before it gets to a de-S'er in combination with the de-S'er, it just makes life a lot easier. It's a lot, much, much better. <laughs> yeah. My question is, I've used it a lot, but how much tuning should I apply? Like if we, if we went back to the Beatles records and we, look, and we put that through this, how, how in tune is a really in tune performance without making it sound robotic? So that, great question. Um, ah, that's a big question. I would say it depends, which is a, is a terrible answer. Um, however, no one should ever want to tune or touch the Beatles ever, uh, because why would you? Um, but I also feel like things are a little too perfect these days. Um, so like you've got like other products out there that obviously like auto tune and all that, like hard tune things. Um, that's a sonic characteristic. That's cool. It works for that thing. Um, but if you actually want 
a performance to feel organic and still feel natural and like a real performance and not like a robot was singing it, that's where Melodyne comes into place. Um, so I feel like it does depend on the person and on the intonation, string, frankly, of the actual instruments, right? So if you play in a studio where you have a piano that was slightly out that day because the tuner didn't come along and the singer sings to that, that's in tune enough for me, right? Because that means they're in tune with each other. So like that's kind of personally where I like to live. As long as things, like it's like timing too. Not everything has to be gridded all the time. As long as everybody's together, that's okay. And you, I think really what it comes down to is you just have to make that decision in pre-production that like this is what it's gonna be and this is what we're gonna lean into um, across the board. So, yeah. Yeah. so this is Christopher, good to meet you. Now, as a working musician myself, I find this um, possible career path really interesting. So can you tell us a bit about um, what this entails and your experience of doing this as, as a musician? Uh, yeah, well, first of all, my name is Massar Christopher Martin, and I've been an Army musician for about 19 years now. Uh, so my experience has been great. I went to college for four years. Uh, when I was done with that, I pursued the Army as a career to be a musician, and I've been playing trombone uh, since. We have uh, all, all the benefits you get from being in the military, the paid vacations, the medical care, the steady paycheck, housing, food, uh, clothing allowance, all the uh, perks you get, and I get to play music for uh, a career. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a, a question. What's the best thing about this career, and what's the worst thing about this career? The, the best thing about this career is all the travel I've done and the people I've played for. Uh, I was stationed in Japan for three years, uh, so I got to play for uh, their, their public, and they absolutely love American music. Uh, stationed in Hawaii for six years, so all the beautiful places I've been, all the wonderful people I've met, all the great musicians I've got to play with, uh, throughout my career. Uh, the worst part is it's all about to end in the next year or two uh, when I finally retire. That sounds great. Nice to meet you and thanks for sharing that with us. So this is Megami Cable. All my cables are Megami and I love them. They last really well. The only problem I have is my cat sometimes chews them. Have you got any tips, Jeff? Well, all I can say is uh, keep them away from your cats. However, if your cat damages your cable, a lifetime warranty, it, it covers bear attacks, motorcycle uh, accidents, lawnmower accidents, and of course, cats that may gnaw on your cable. Our warranty covers all that. You can send them back to us. We'll get you a new one. Uh, but you know, your, your cat knows quality just like you do, so I appreciate that. I'm going to call you next week and follow up on that, so watch out. <laughs> great cables, great to see you. How's the show for you? So far, it's been excellent, well attended. It's been a really, really great, great afternoon. Awesome. Great to see you, great to meet you. See you next time. Hey, I'm John DiNicola with Focusrate. We're here at AES 2022. Really excited to be back out here again. Uh, we're showing off our new Vocaster interfaces. This is a brand new range that was created specifically for podcasters. So for the first time, we've created a range of interfaces just for podcasters, and we have some really unique features that make them perfect for that. Number one, you have a mic preamp with 70 dB of gain range, so that's plenty of gain for those uh, broadcast dynamic microphones. You don't need a cloud lifter or any kind of booster. You also have automatic gain settings, so I can press and hold here, talk into my microphone for about 10 seconds as it counts down, and it will automatically set my gain for me. You can see it's kind of counting down there right now. And when it gets to the end, one, two, one, two, one, two, just show me where it set the gain, and now I have the perfect level that I need, all done for me. It also has our enhanced feature, which is DSP built into the unit, which applies processing to your voice. So you can get a little uh, EQ, compression on there, a little high pass filter, um, but it's all preset based out of our Vocaster Hub software over here. So you just choose warm, radio, whatever sound you wanna have, and you can record with that vo uh, setting, or you can use it in a live stream, which is really crucial uh, to have processing on your voice in a live stream without having to route through a DAW or anything is really nice to have. In addition, we have phone connectivity. So on Vocaster 1, it's a hardwired connection, but on Vocaster 2, for the first time, we've added Bluetooth to an interface. So you can pair your phone with the Vocaster 2, and then your phone caller pops up right here as its own channel in the Vocaster Hub software, and you can add it to your show mix. Uh, so we have your phone connectivity. There's even a camera, eighth inch camera output on these. If you're using a, a camera along with the podcast, you can get the audio into that as well. 
really simple mixing software so you can create a show mix for streaming. Uh, you could record that show mix, but you can also record all the sources individually. It's a multi-channel interface. So you want to go back later and mix it, uh, you can do that. So there's two models, Vocaster 1 and Vocaster 2. So that's one mic input, two mic inputs. The only other difference is that Vocaster 2 gives you that second headphone output and it gives you that Bluetooth connectivity. Otherwise, the feature set's the same. You still get the great uh, Vocaster Hub software. And uh, yeah, that's the Vocaster range. So this is Soundly. And making videos lately, I'm always looking for sound effects. So this is a subscription service. So let's say that the good test then is let's see if we got some sound effects that I might use. Yeah. So like I often want like a um, well a round of applause. That's an easy one, right? Great. So it's all in the, it's all stored in the cloud, yeah. and you can download them. That's really cool. Okay, how about I, um, yeah, that, that was an easy one. Let's try another one. Yeah. How about the, um, when you tell a joke, you know, but, um, but, um, tss. What's that, room shot? Yeah, I'm not sure what I'd search for. No. I would search for joke. joke? No. <laughs> I know. Uh, it. Like a, uh, it's mostly for uh, TV and uh, film. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, I, I need things like um, like booing, hissing. Yeah. What else? Oh, drum roll. You have drum rolls, things like that. No, or take the S off, maybe. Yeah. No, see, this is a problem I have with what I do. Like, I don't want. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's cool. The reason I don't use, use these right now is because I haven't found one that does suit my needs. So is there like a trial where you can try this out? Yeah, there's a free version and then everything you search, you can see uh, our selection. Uh, the, the, the pro sounds are grayed out, but you can uh, get a selection of uh, free sounds, which you can use uh, commercially. Okay. With the free, free version. Right. And when, when was this software created? How old is it? It started in 2015, but oh, like, okay. uh, 2017 is when we started going more public. With, so it's been around, for, been around for a while too. Yeah. Okay. I shall try it out then and see if I can find all the sounds that I need. Absolutely. Thank you. Good to meet you. Just to add on to that, he said there is a way to request sounds and there was a free trial. So I'm going to try that out on the channel and I'll let you know if it's how, you know, how good it is if you make videos. Some of that could be very useful. It is royalty free as well, so you can use it and you won't get a, 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 a strike on YouTube. I'll check that out and put it in a future video. This is Podbean, and this is John. Nice Hello. to meet you, John. So I'm thinking about starting a podcast. I have a YouTube channel. Obviously, that's where people are watching this right now. I've thought about making a podcast. Can you tell us why it's a good idea to make a podcast and how Podbean helps you do it? Yeah, absolutely. Let me answer the first question first. So starting a podcast is one of the coolest things you can do in 2022. There's so much energy around podcasting. It's such an engaging medium. And we actually just talked off screen a little bit. You can be anywhere. You could be driving in the car. You know, you could be doing laundry. You could be doing dishes. And what you can do is just throw on your favorite podcast, whether it's a music podcast, you know, whether it's a wrestling podcast, which are two that I love the most, um, and you can just be listening to content all the time. We know about YouTube, we know how engaging that is. Podcasting is the next engaging medium. And why Podbean? The pitch you're always gonna hear from me is that Podbean gives you the tools to do everything that you could want to with your podcast. So once you've recorded your show, you can use our service to upload to any of the directories, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We give you the ability to monetize your podcast through ads and premium podcasting and we, don't, we have unlimited storage and bandwidth, so you don't have to worry about the amount of content that you're uploading or the amount of listeners that are listening to your content. So in so many ways, there's so many tools that we have. We have a live streaming platform, uh, which you can use that's audio only. We have the ability for you to do video podcasting. So the, that's the why behind podcasting and the why behind why you should choose Podbean as your podcasting host of choice. So I want to feature Fab Filter because I've done videos on their EQ plugin, but they've had people there all day long. I've tried, it's been a, it's been a comical. I've tried to interview the guy. 
and I can't get there because everyone's looking at the plugins. They're really, 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 really popular as I think they should be. Maybe next time. Thank you, Fab Builder.